I'm so excited for today because I have my friend Joyce Leach here, and we are going to talk about all the cool stuff that she and her family uh, has kind of done in Piedmont. And uh, just talk about the things that I've admired uh, from watching from Get Through America and then also have had the opportunity to be a part of uh, Junklahoma, which we will talk about. And uh, and so down the Go Win workshop in the back of your store. Yes. Yes. So uh, so so I'm excited to have you here, Joyce. How are you doing today? Thank you. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. So now are you an early morning riser? That's not on the thing, but I just was curious. Yes, I am. I always go to bed super early, probably like 9, 9.30. Oh, um, do you really? Yes, I'm, and then 5 o'clock. Now, my you, body wakes me up, even if I don't want to. Five you get up at 5. Uh, I usually get up about 5.50, but yeah. my body wakes me up about 5. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 50 minutes we're on to a schedule of- <laughs> yes we're on a schedule so now do you have a morning routine or like what do you normally get up and do you do your coffee is there anything um, you do first thing so in the morning? probably pretty interesting to know i've never had a glass or a right. cup of coffee ever That's right. ever i have a theory about that um i had a grandpa that well it was a step grandpa but always drank coffee and uh, his breath, probably. I don't know. I never <laughs> wanted to drink coffee ever. Just in my because whole life. the never smell of his breath. Yes, yes. Is that wrong? <laughs> yeah, I no. I think that's that is so funny because I think I'm the same way. I drink coffee now. I didn't drink coffee until I started working for a church. Yeah. And like every meeting we went to, people were always eating. I, I was like, and there would always be somebody not done with their food. Yeah. And so I'm like, I think coffee's easier just to go and hang out. And I, I went to, my wife was a coffee drinker. I wasn't. But now yeah. after working for a church for almost 10 years, I guess, uh, and meeting with people all the time, coffee's just easy. Yes. But I guess I could get something else. You got a fruit fruity drink the other day when we met. I love Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper? Oh. I do. I'm trying to stay away from it right now. But okay. I do okay. love Dr. Pepper, yes. Now, it's, what about Sonic? Do you get Dr. Uh, Dr. Pepper from Sonic? Um, I like the Cokes at Sonic, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. that's the only time I drink a Coke, but Sonic Coke is the best. That's my wife's jam, yeah. is uh, yeah. Sonic Coke. Then, uh, do you ever do vanilla Dr. Pepper fruit? Mm, no, I don't need it. No. Oh, man. I'm s- pretty simple. Just, just, just Dr. Pepper. Yep. Just yep. give me my Dr. Pepper. Yep. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Well, good, good, good. Well, Joyce, I am so glad you're here today. Uh, the f- I, I'm curious. Uh Using five words, how would your best friend describe you? Only using five words. And if you went six, well, nobody's counting. Well, okay, so I knew you were going to ask this. And so <laughs> I, I talked to uh, a couple of my best friends and, uh-huh. you know, kind of weeded through a few of their answers, you know, to see, you know, what I felt comfortable took, saying. Wait a second. You asked several of them, <laughs> then you take it. <laughs> you're taking five words. That's good. Go ahead. So uh, genuine. Okay. Positive. Hardworking. Generous and sometimes spunky. Oh, I'll throw that in there. Like if you had just if you were to pick just one of those words, which one do you think's um, the one that you would like? Yeah, I'm definitely this. I mean, very hardworking and very genuine would probably be the most okay. best. Um, just because I feel like what you see is what you get. Yeah, and I'm kind of the person that I think people uh, trust me to tell them the truth when yeah. they have hard questions, and which is not always easy to do. But I sort of have a a blunt, I guess, way of speaking sometimes. Yeah. And I just kind of say, you know, the Bible has a verse that says, you know, a wound from a friend can be trusted. I might be that friend that people, you know, whether good or bad, I'm going to try to tell you the truth as I see it. You know? And that's probably the reason you have friends that love you is yeah. because you're willing to tell us the truth. You know, yes. like that's, that's really good. Yes. So you talk about hard work and where did that come from? Like, Family, watching family hard work, like was it? Yeah. What made yeah. you such a hard worker? Uh, my dad was a super hard worker, worked himself to death probably. Um, he just really instilled that and in watching him and just watching, you know, we'll get into that yeah, more yeah. when we get into, you know, the business part of it. But uh, he was a, a very hard worker and so I think I just got that trait from him. Gotcha. Yeah. We know that you're you're an entrepreneur, you're a business owner. Yes. Is there a business owner that you're an entrepreneur that you admire? There is, and I really um, took some time thinking about this because I really don't have, like, a pie-in-the-sky person that's way up here. I mean, I really just kind of put it on a personal level. You mm-hmm. know, I have a friend. Her name's uh, Kristen Grande. She's the junk hippie, and I would say that in 
in the junk world and for what I do for a living, she's kind of a, a person that I've admired just because I've watched her uh, evolve and change um, with with everything that happens. She's always trying new things and she's created a community uh, without borders, basically, because just in the vendor world, you have people from all over and she does shows in Oklahoma and Texas and everybody that is a part of her world, kind of, we all feel like we know each other through this world uh-huh. and and she's just done a great job uh, adapting and changing, and, and I just love it. So I'm always getting ideas from her, and, you know, I have to throw this in here because, I mean, you also would be somebody that in the business world I admire. I yeah. tell you all the time, I steal your ideas because <laughs> uh, they're good. And so, and I feel like, you know, Piedmont and Guthrie have a lot of similar yeah, for sure. uh, things in common, and so in struggles and positive things, and so uh-huh. I can kind of see what's going on and Guthrie, what's working, what's not working, things that you're trying, yeah. and you know, it's that's it's cool. great to uh, to try the same things. That is so cool. You know, my wife and I almost moved to Piedmont before we moved to Guthrie. Everybody so, wants to live in Piedmont. Yeah, it was one of the places <laughs> that we looked at, and then I don't know why we didn't, but we ended up because we're both from Guthrie. Yeah, and we just ended up coming back home, which I mean, yeah. it's been great for us, and yeah. I'm glad we did. So that that's cool. And so junk hippie. Yes. How, how can people can people follow her on Instagram? Oh yeah, she's got like a hundred thousand so followers start, okay. on Facebook. Um, she's been doing shows since twenty twelve. Okay, and so I feel like she's kind of a pioneer in the world in Oklahoma. You know, yeah. setting up these big shows and bringing people together and really setting a high standard for them. What is it that people love about junk? Like that's not one of I didn't. This is just out of the left field kind of question, but what is it that people love about junk? Well, because uh, I use junk as a loving term. I mean, that's not, oh, yeah, yeah, no. you know, but uh-huh. junk can be anything. And so really, you know, I'm saying, you know, we sell junk, but that's because we sell so much diversity of items that no matter what it is that you're looking for, you know, hopefully we're going to have something, you know, in that category. So and, and I've been to one of y'all's events. I've been to your store. Like, especially the events. Like, not every – some of that stuff is brand new. Yeah, there's a you mix. Know, there's even, a good mix. Yeah, yeah, even though I think when some people think of junk, you know, we we don't think of – You be, think of rusty, yes, dirty yes, junk. Yes, and we do have that, and people yes. love that. But it's a good mix of vintage, antique, upcycled, repurposed, uh, handmade, and boutique. That's kind of the, the areas that we try to – yeah. And it's specialized in. Now, what is the key? Again, this I'm, I'm coming in with some left because I'm thinking about these things now. I love reselling. Uh-huh. I, I don't do a whole bunch of it, but I love like getting something, putting it on Facebook Market, and reselling it. You yes. know, like yes. I've always so thought about like, what if I just had a booth of just things? But there's a skill set yeah. to knowing what to buy in order to resell and get the most and to. Determine the best value. Well, like, what are some tips to that? So the addiction is the hunt. So oh. going out, finding finding the, the items and finding something at a great price, of course, that's always, you know, you have to find the great price and then yep. you're able to. And when you sell it and you make a little bit of money, it's pretty exciting. And it so, is. I mean, I'll say my husband last week went to an estate sale and from all the research we've done, we feel like it's a genuine 1626 map of Germany. Um, so, you know, you do research on that. You pay $5 for it and look it up on eBay, and it's ranging from 1000 to 3000 We'll see what we get. You yeah, never know. I mean, yeah. just because it says that doesn't mean that's what you're going to get. And, and we're pretty much, if we get a good deal, whoever buys it from us is going to get a good deal. We pass that on. So For sure. Um, but it is exciting because there's so much random things out there and just – you know, where, where to find it at. Yeah. Now, was your husband into uh, the reselling junk world be- before you all got no, together? Or? No, Okay, so no. now has he kind of gotten into it? <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's done some, found some really good finds, and I think every time that you find something that's a good find or a good sell, it encourages you to... Go do more. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... what uh, The auctions, are those, is that the best place to go? That's the first thing we started doing back in um, my my junking partner and best friend, Amy Balsiger. Um, we have been doing this since 2000, and the very first thing that we started doing was auctions. Mm. And then it kind of evolved to estate sales and garage sales, and then, you know, you have the occasional online sell. But, mm-hmm. I mean, we just... 
wherever garage sales are mainly you know where we we do our best but my husband he loves estate sales so he you know he kind of likes to spend a little more for a little higher quality and okay. you know for us we just we want to get a whole bunch and uh-huh. you know flip it and yes. so just depending on what your style is and what you're looking for some of our vendors are specific to mid-century or purely antique or purely you know yard art and so it just depends on you know what you're looking for where you go Okay, I may come back to some more of these questions. I'm liking this vibe of getting tips and ideas on how I can get some stuff. Oh yeah, and start reselling it. <laughs> Tell me about your parents, because I know uh, I know the history of your store, mm-hmm. and I know what they mean to you, and, and kind of how you got into what you're doing. T- can you tell me a little bit yeah. about who they are and what how they how you got to this place? Um, our parents, Dennis and Janice Mills, um, have really laid the foundation for everything that we're doing. They basically did all the hard work. You know, I can't, we wouldn't be anywhere where we're at right now if it wasn't for them. Um, I mean, they they opened their first garage in 1981, so over 40 years ago. We've been, you know, working in Piedmont for 40 years with family business, but started with a, a little a a garage that was in a building outside of you know outside of our home and kind of gradually ended up moving around seven different locations just right there in Piedmont until they finally now when you say garage a mechanic garage he he fixed cars cars. yes yeah I mean when my parents first got married he was an airplane mechanic out at uh aero commander in Bethany and just you know my grandpa had worked on airplanes my uncle did and he kind of he was a, a motorcycle muscle car guy and had always just done that and so he wanted to have his his own business and um having three daughters and a wife you know he needed to to make that money and so they uh they that was basically a single income my mom kind of had a couple jobs here and there but mainly she worked with him running parts doing the office work but uh they struggled they struggled big time they you know, had failures, um, restarted over several times, um, just in the different locations with, they actually had one bankruptcy that, you know, they had to completely start over. They started as Mills Garage and ended up as Dennis Automotive because of that. But, um, in 1999, when they finally were able to buy the building that we're in now, which is the first building that they actually owned for themselves Mm -hmm. without having to rent, um, they were really blessed by the Wiedemann family who had owned that the 50 years previous, um, this building means so much to the town. It's, it was the first general store brick building, first building that had electricity, its own water system. Oh, wow. I mean, so the history is there. But in the 70s, they had closed the store, moved it a block up to be on the main road, and it sat as storage for 20 years. And so whenever we were able to get in there, um, we were able to, through the years, revitalize the downtown. I mean, now it's kind of got a reputation of being the heartbeat of the town because there's so much nostalgia in that building. You know, the old, the older generation, they come in, they tell us stories about sitting around the, you know, the old uh, wood-burning stove. And, you know, this building didn't have air conditioning and heating until about five years ago. So for the first hundred oh, wow. plus years, you know, you would go in there and in the summer you'd feel the heat and in the winter you'd feel the cold. But, you know, that's how it always was. And so you'd have these little things to sit around and keep warm in. And um, and they remember that. They come in, they remember the, the squeaky floors from the wood floors and just uh, so... You know, that generation has that. Now what we're doing is we're trying to build that same nostalgia for this generation so that whenever, you know, at prom time tomorrow, all the seniors are going to, a lot of them come and take pictures around our building, you know. And so there's just different things that we try to do um, that creates that sense of this is my hometown, this is a store, you know, whatever. Like we want to mean something to people later. You know, yeah. they're going to have memories of us in this in this building. Real quick, on the, the them coming to take pictures, we were just talking about here in Guthrie about take pictures for prom. Yeah. For them to do that at your building, was that something that you all encouraged or did it just kind of happen um, organically? I or, Organically, really. I yeah. noticed them doing it because we just have that, you know, it's huge brick building. And yeah, so people were using beautiful. that as a backdrop. And so, like, um, early on, I just took notice of that. And then I tried to start cleaning up the areas where uh-huh. I knew they'd be and maybe create little photo ops for them. And so I think... I think that everyone's just appreciated that. And then, of course, now we have the stage that we have over for Junklahoma, and they love to use that. And and even uh, whenever graduation got canceled in 2020 from COVID, we uh, did a little walk the stage event and did a photo op where these seniors 
just came all we set up for a full day and they'd come and uh walk across the stage in their gown take a picture we had a little balloons and stuff set up and just gave them something to you know that's a thing you walk the stage well if you don't have graduation you don't get to do that so we we tried to in our own way provide little you know see a need fill a need that's yeah. kind of you know do you remember that old robots movie yeah that resonated with me yeah. and so you, whenever years ago i've just you know that's what i go by if i see something that we can do i try to do it that is so cool now on like when you do things like the um because one of the things I admire about you is how involved you're in the community. And it's those little things like that. Yeah. Hey, they're coming to pick, take pictures for prom in front of our building. What can we do to make yeah. that better for them? Or, yeah. hey, let's use our stage for grad- so pe- the students yeah. can walk across. Like, you do those kind of things. Like, where does that come from? Like, was, did your parents well, kind of instill those kind of things? Or what does that come from for you? Because, yes, you can benefit from it as mm-hmm. a – as a business, right? Because it gives you exposure, especially when they take pictures, yeah. the building is in the, but I think it's more than that for you. What, like what, what is that? What draws you to do those kind of things? I really, there's nobody that's just telling you as a business person, Hey, this is what you need to do. This yeah. is what's supposed to do. And so I really have just tried to, um, make, make these things up, I guess, as I go. Uh Like, like I said, if I see that we can do something trying to do it because no one's going to come and ask you to do it, you know, like if, and if you don't do it, who's going to do it. And so as business leaders, we have to step up and create ideas and be willing to be flexible and do try new things and different things. And, um, just things that will engage the community and what the community is looking for and what they need. So, and I'm in a small town, and so you know it's a little bit different. If I were in a bigger town, there'd be so much, you know, so many other things going on. But when you're in a small town, you're able to do these small things, and it kind of stands out. So, um, I mean, I have a little bit of an advantage there, where yeah. you know, it's kind yeah, of cool. in Oklahoma City, you may, but you then you can too though like you just kind of own your area of Oklahoma yeah. City right right yeah uh, but you can still do those kind of things and in that I don't want to get too far off your parents there was more to kind of them coming along because I was thinking about them doing the bankruptcy right yes like at that moment most people would just give up and and really I mean they had every reason to um it was back in the 80s whenever you know before being incorporated and all that so you went bankrupt, you lost your business, your home, your car, you know, we basically, um, we were broke. And so, but the, during that time, I can say my parents displayed a enormous amount of generosity in that not only did our family go bankrupt, but we had just a few months before that, uh, my parents had taken in a lady that was pregnant and who already had a, a three-year-old. And so they were living with us whenever we transitioned from losing our house into this little farmhouse, two-bedroom, you know, from the literally from the 1800s. I mean, it was in bad shape. So but they went with us to that. But we were there for nine months. My dad, you know, went and pumped gas at a gas station for a while until he got himself back together and started over and, um, oh, got a different house, you know, a nicer house. And we just started over and they did and they worked away. And, you know, the amazing thing about my parents was, you know, like they didn't have anybody, like if they were going to be closed, there was nobody there to run the shop for them. Mm -hmm. But my parents were very good about putting family first and displaying that. And so like I was a softball player and I played all through college too. And my dad would close the shop every time he made it to 95% of my games, no matter where they were. And so like, And he knew about being broke, too. So, you know, like, you either work and make money or, you you know, sometimes it's a choice. What are you going to do? Are you going to go to your kid's game or are you going to, you know, make sure your kid can afford to go to that game? And so my dad figured out a way to do both and, you know, just so that he put put me first a lot. And so, like, that was both of them, not just him. But, you know, it's just. That's really cool. I love that. So I love that you said they knew what it felt like to be broke. Because they had lost everything. Yes. But even though they know that feeling, they still were willing to say, we're going to go and support family yes. and be there because that that meant that much to them. Yeah. And, and looking t- back, I didn't deserve that. I mean, honestly. <laughs> like, I, What do you mean you didn't deserve I, it? Were I, you- <laughs> I was a tough teenager. And so, I mean, like, they, were, they showed unconditional love. They mm-hmm. truly did because mm-hmm. lots of days I didn't deserve that type of yeah. support. But they, they loved me through it and... 
believed in me. Um, I always knew I was going to be a business person. I didn't know what I was going to be doing, but I knew, you know, if we were going to play Monopoly, I was going to be the banker. If we were going to play store, I was going to be the manager, you know, like that was, that was just my personality. I have a, a natural knack to uh, delegate, yeah, you know, like some people call it bossiness. I call it leadership. I, you know, <laughs> you take me as delegate. I am. Yes, I'm great at delegating. You know, so that is a skill that that is definitely needed when you're talking about running a business or or leading a team. Yeah. So to be the as long to as delegate. you know, as long as you do it with that, you're a hard worker. I think mm-hmm. that people, you know, receive it. You know, if I were lazy and just bossing people around, then you know, obviously nobody's gonna you know, respect me, yeah. but you know, I, I would never ask anybody to do anything I wouldn't do Yeah, except for clean the bathrooms. <laughs> Heather gets to clean the bathrooms. Heather. Oh, Who Heather. is Heather? Heather's, no. my, Heather's my sister uh-huh. and we are also co-owners of the old store. Um, uh, the joke is that we live the same life. Um, we often show up wearing the same outfit to work because we we're just, we're linked, but, uh, we have another sister, Angie. She's not in the family business, but we love her. And yeah. But Heather and I, we've always been, we're the two younger, I'm the youngest. And so we've always been close and um, we just, our personalities are sort of opposite. And yeah. so they uh, work very well together. Well, um, what's the age difference, you don't mind me asking? Two, two years. Two years, okay. Yeah, yeah that that's really cool. What is that question on here? I don't know if I have that question on here. What is it, what are some tips on working with family? Like you... You worked because your mom yes. at one point was still working there, right? Yes, my mom and I worked together for the first uh, let's see, eight years. Yeah, it was just the just her and I. And my sister joined the team um, about six or seven years into the business, and so um, honestly, controlling your emotions is mm. a is a key, and then also um, forgiveness. So when you're working with your family, they know you the best. They know your buttons the best. You can be yourself. And so it's really easy in frustration or hard days to kind of to let that out on each other. And so um, you just have to be really good at understanding where each other's at and kind of letting things slide yeah. off. Yeah. 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 That's good. My, uh, so my father uh, – and my father and stepmom have a business, and my brother works for them. Mm-hmm. And I always thought that I would probably end up working with my dad or whatever. But, you know, in I guess in church ministry, I've always worked with family as well. And right. so it's not always the easiest thing to navigate. And so I think – but it's to me, it's also one of the – the joys of life oh, to yeah. be able to work with your family and, oh, yes. and, sure. and go home at the end of a hard day's work knowing that you did it with your family. There's mm-hmm. something special about that. I, the first uh, 10 years I worked there, my dad passed away in 2011. And so getting to work with him those last 11 years of his life, I mean, I wouldn't trade that for anything. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and then also being able to, you know, I started working with, I know this is one of your questions, but I started working with my family basically kind of out of convenience. Uh Um, I had just finished college a year before and really wasn't, I had done an internship for, um, a company out of at JC Penney's and, you know, they had offered me to go into their, uh, management program, but I got pregnant. And so I thought, well, I'm just going to raise this kid and I'll work with my mom. I'll drive down to Piedmont a couple days a week. It'll be easy. I'll have some money and, uh, take, be able to, to keep him as well. So that turned into, um, my parents have seven grandchildren between the three of us. So what happened was, All of the grandkids ended up coming to work with us. We had a little area for them. So my mother and I, for the first, were, you know, were there with all of the kids. And, um, I mean, I just feel like it allowed us to to raise them Mm. instead of putting them in daycare or just, you know, sending them off to some kind of school or something. But, you know, that was that's one of another one of my really great memories. But that's that's one of the joys too. Again, going back to a family business, yeah, to be able to do those kind of things, yeah. And I love that people. I think people appreciate shopping at places like that too. Yes, like there's something about going to a family business, and I see kids running around that I know belong yeah. to the store owners or their families. Yeah, like to me, that makes me smile and happy. I just enjoy that. Yeah, and then even seeing them now, you know, my daughter's getting ready to graduate, and you know, but. P- 
people that have been at the store and customers for the past 20 years, you know, that's what they saw. They Mm -hmm. saw her as a child and now they're able to look at her and, you know, see that she's graduating and just like, you can see the whole transition of, and stages of our life. Yeah. Yeah, You you guys are growing up with us. Yeah. So You kind of like, when you see them now, you're like, I remember when you were, you know, like (laughs) in diapers or whatever it may be, ripping through the store and just. Screaming in the back room, (laughs) crying or fighting with each other, or my dad yelling at them to stay out of the street. Uh But yeah, they definitely, that was their home when they made it their home and let everybody know that they run the show. (laughs) Do you think any of them are going to carry on the family business? I hope so. I mean, really, like my my niece Madison, Heather's daughter, she works with us now. So I see her, you know, staying as being a permanent fixture. Um, my kids not being growing up in the Piedmont community, you uh-huh. know, I'm not sure how that's going to play yeah. out for them or where they want to be. Uh, but we we really try to. There's so much space there that, you know, I am always telling them, you know, like whatever your dream is, one day this building will be yours. What's your dream? Be dreaming right yeah. now. Be thinking of things that you want to be or do and, you know, like the foundation that their grandparents laid for them, yeah. you know, can at one point be passed on to them and they can do anything, you know, they don't have to do what we've done, you know, like it's been successful. And if they want to, then I hope they are able to carry it on. But if they come in and their hearts leading them to something else, I mean, that's theirs. I want them to make it theirs. I'm, you know, the other part of our business is the, the commercial embroidery business that we have, you know, and, and it's been a great living. It wouldn't have been something I would chose. It was something my mom chose. But because, you know, like, I just want them to have the freedom of choice, too. Yeah. You know, yeah. like. What, what, why did your uh, mom make that, uh, that, not pivot, I guess y'all, y'all kept the store, but then you started doing the embroidery. What? She was doing that first. Oh, so the embroidery. She was doing was it. Yes. Yeah, she had bought herself a little home machine, just uh-huh. a little singer, you know, one of the cheapo home machines. Uh, when my, when niece when my niece Madison was born and she was making baby gifts and then, you know, she was showing them off and other people wanted them. And it just, it gradually turned into a little home business for her. And that was probably two years before my parents had actually moved into the store. And so whenever they got that building, she decided there's enough space to have a little workroom in the back. So she just wanted to take it to the next level. We started with uh, two machines at the store. We have seven now. Each one of those machines, you could buy a small car. I mean, that's their, yeah. their, the real deal. And so, um, but it was just out of people encouraging her and wanting it. And then it turned into now we don't even take walk-ins anymore because we stay so busy. We uh, do all commercial work, work for a promotion company that's treated us really well and keeps us super busy. And so we got a lot going on. We're uh, a lot of times when you come into the store, we'll be in the back with our little sweatshop going and, you know, several (laughs) people back there, but um, we stay busy. It's good. How many people work for the store? So we have three full time and then I've got three to four people that come in and help um, on call when needed. Okay. Yeah. What is the hardest part about being a store, a business, a, a small business owner? Um, really I have to say staying relevant, keeping things mm. fresh, bringing things in. Um, back in, we, we ended up buying the business for my mom in 2013. And so we, at that point figured, um, we have to, you know, we're in a small town and in our community itself, you know, there's only, they're not going to come in every day, you know, like people that it's almost like they get used to you being there. They're not, they don't take you for granted, but you know, they know they can always come. So you gotta, you gotta find ways to pull in. You gotta be a destination. Mm -hmm. You gotta pull in surrounding communities, people to come and find reasons. And, and Piedmont, the hardest thing about that town is that it's, it's a bedroom community is what, mm-hmm. you know, it's considered. Yep. It's a dead end. There's really nobody's driving through Piedmont to get anywhere else. If you're on Piedmont Road, you're going to Piedmont for a specific reason. And so that's what we've had to do. We've had to figure out ways to bring people to Piedmont. And so different things that we've uh, tried to do to make that happen is just, uh, you know, what, what do people, people like about Piedmont? People really like the schools. We know that it's a family community. And so uh, we try to focus on that hometown feel, that small town feel. And so uh, we we created a I Heart Piedmont, which was our grassroots, you know, shop local mm-hmm. type movement. But in that, we wanted to create events that kind of emphasize that hometown spirit that we have. And so hometown hoedown, hometown Halloween, hometown holidays, you know, just giving kind of that 
like at church, you have your ice cream socials, mm. you know, like that's the kind of feel like you want, like you're in the ho- the Hallmark movie, you yeah. know, like with our little festivals and things where everybody comes, you're in the middle of the street, you know each other, you're eating, you're enjoying yourself. You don't have to watch your kids because you know they're in this little, yeah. you know, four block radius. I mean, not that you're not watching them, yeah. but you know, you know what I <laughs> yes, mean? I know exactly it's what a you safe mean. community. Yeah. It's a safe place. And so really just trying to... Um, capitalize on on that hometown feel and, and giving people you know giving them that when they come yeah and in 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 doing that like what have how do you because it's easier said than done staying relevant it is right it is and do you ever look at it and be like okay i feel like we're losing yes <laughs> yes i do um well what do you do when you feel that way because so many of the things that you try you know you put so much effort into them and then you want everybody to come and have a great time and everybody it seems like they want you to have those but they can't always come they can't always make it and so not everything is feels like a success you know you put a lot of work into something you publicize it put it all together you know, it's hard when you're the setup crew, the cleanup crew, yeah. the production crew and all that. And so uh, those things can be exhausting. So really, you know, through all the different things event wise that we've tried, you know, not everything sticks. Yeah. And so and not everything you want to do again, because, you know, if you didn't feel like if it's too much work or whatever. But yeah. um, you know. sometimes doing it once does not really tell the true story. Like if you, maybe it was the second or third time. Yeah. But because of all the work that you put yes. in, you're like, no, we're done with that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we don't want to give that again. So you keep trying until the things that stick become worth it. Like Junklahoma. Like Junklahoma. Junklahoma is my, if I don't do anything else, I'm going to do this. And really, you know, I, I was Founders Day. It's part of Founders Day. Piedmont Founders Day has been going on since 1991. So, you know, it's established. For me, I I just was like, hey, I can come piggyback on this event. They're already fine. They're already getting the trash cans. They're already getting the porta potties. They're already getting the tables and chairs and tents. So all I gotta do is organize this one little block of it, you know. And so seemed like something really manageable, and I can do. I had no idea that it would grow into what it has. I mean, yeah. I feel like um, sometimes even people are coming to Junklahoma don't even know that there's a whole other event going on that's been happening for thirty years, and so they're kind of surprised, and or they think that I've done it all and I haven't, you know, obviously these people, that is a volunteer committee that puts on Founders Day. And so like they've been doing it for a long time. It's not even really under any true organization. It's just, it's purely grassroots. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's kind of stood the test of time. And then here I just come in and jump on, on board with it. But um, I think what I've been able to bring to the table is just advertising at a different level, really trying to bring, you know, instead of it just being a small community event, bring into it being a state event, yeah. you know, something that, you know, you can road trip to, you can get your girlfriends together for you guys can come and shop. And, and the, the part that I do, we have about a hundred spaces that we fill with different vendors of the different variety. And we just try to have something for everybody, something, you, you know, unique finds that people can come and they want to come back. And, um, I think we've, we've done a good job. I mean, obviously not everybody does as well as everybody else, yeah. but it's, uh, I think it's, it's standing the That's test good. of time so far. <laughs> so far. Do you already have all the hunter spaces booked up? Like, what does that look like? Um, we're pretty close to three-fourths of the way filled. We're still accepting. There's uh, several categories that were filled in, but when it comes to – we're still looking for junk, antique, repurpose, handmade. Uh, we don't do direct market type vendors. Those are all, – all of that type of vendors and food vendors are done through Founders Day. And okay. so I'm able to just focus on on the on the really junk stuff. I say junk, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the everything type Not vendors. Not really junk, but Not junk. you know what yes, I'm saying. Yes. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> uh, when did you start seeing the importance – and you probably – you kind of already touched on this, but being active in the community, like – Was there a certain thing that that triggered for you? What was it? And are you just intentional about how do you support other things? Like I know you do Jerklahoma or the kids are coming to take prom pictures. You did the graduation. But is there anything that you like intentional? I know that you were super involved in the chamber. So the iHeart Pember – I Heart Piedmont is kind of my way of like supporting the community. Um, we have a Facebook page for that as well, which really only focuses on Piedmont businesses, Piedmont events, Piedmont happenings. Um, and it's, it's really just me able to share everybody's things in, in one place. So um, I think that there were a lot of businesses that were seeing 
what we were doing and just wanted to jump on board, you know, piggyback, kind of like what I did on Founders Day and wanted to get included. And so what started happening was our little quiet street started getting more businesses. And so, you know, we've got uh, three different boutiques now and a couple offices and a workout place and, you know, um, a nutrition place. And so it's just kind of hair salon, it's getting built up. And we have a lot of women business owners, which is really kind of cool. So we can kind of team up together. But um, in the last two to three years, a lot of the things that I was doing in my early years, now they're starting to do and and grab a hold of and keep those little events going. And so uh, it's more of a team effort than just me trying to, you know, do everything, which not that I ever was, but you know, like I I was trying to do a bunch. Yeah. And so now I feel like I don't have to do all that, but I can kind of sit back and and kind of reap a little bit, I guess. You know, we sowed twenty over twenty years now and so now we're just kind of getting to enjoy and sit back and um after my dad passed away, I I I call it our project therapy um stage of life. We just really my sister and I just kinda went crazy trying to 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 make the building, make the business the best it can be and and obviously, there, it's such an old building. There's forever amounts of projects that we can yeah. do. But um, just every year, I just feel like we just kind of get better in that. That's good. Good, good, good. Uh, how can people learn more about the store? Or is there anything that you want to highlight and, and share with us? Um, so social media is kind of our best way to reach out. So uh, the old store has a page. You can follow it. It's going to be – it's going to focus mostly on – our store vendors, which we have about over 55 unique vendors that are inside our store. So you can follow all the new things that are coming in. If you're looking, if you're in the market to buy something, you know, you can watch on there to see things as they come in and get them as quick as you can. Cause once they're gone, they're gone. Yeah. Um, it's that kind of place. So they can follow us there. Um, Junk Oklahoma has its own Facebook page as well. And it's going to follow the Junk Oklahoma vendors and different, junk style shows that are going on in Oklahoma so they can um kind of see outside of Piedmont type things but yeah. um and then iHeart Piedmont would just which just focuses on Piedmont businesses and happenings and we will put all of these uh links in the show notes so you all can keep up okay. uh, with Joyce and all the cool stuff that they're doing oh and we recently just had uh my niece Madison she's handling this but she's doing a TikTok page for us and so we're what? kind of, yeah I mean so we were doing Twitter we were uh-huh. doing Facebook we were doing Instagram but you know we got to stay fresh with the times and so got to stay relevant yeah yeah so and she's of that younger generation so it feels a little bit more genuine coming from her than from you know, a 45 year old woman trying to be on there. Like, I don't know how to dance. I can't get on there. I don't, I don't know any but of the But you can do how to's on TikTok. Now. Like, oh, how to's yeah. is a big deal. And yeah. Uh, yeah, no, that's cool. So, TikTok, what is it? Uh, the what's old the store, handle? Okay. Oh, oh, the old store, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, we will try to get all those things uh, uh, in the show notes. And uh, Joyce, I love your story. Thank you for, thank you for having me, being willing to share it. And,